Between the last segment and this one, uh, we looked at the wiring diagram, did not find any other main power grounds. There were three on this board. I'm pretty comfortable with uh, what we did. I guess I could do a quick visual and see if I see any other kind of heavy gauge brown wires on, in, in this harness anywhere. Um, and they were all on just that one connector, right, John? Nothing on the other ones? Okay, um, no reason in this case to check computer powers because a faulty power feed is not going to give us high voltage on a ground circuit. So we have a sensor ground circuit with good computer grounds. Um, and my concern then with that, guys, is that whoever was working on this caused this issue in the, in the midst of their testing. And what one of you guys mentioned is what about the ignition switch that has all the wiring that was all touching? Literally, we taped them up. I showed you guys the taped part. But when that car came in and we, we were messing around with it, they were arcing to each other. Um, that could have been what cooked the grounds because there's probably a sensor grounds that go into that ignition switch too. I'm not totally sure on that. Um, I don't know about the how part that this happened, uh, but this would be a point where you would put an engine computer in the car. I'll tell you what though, before you would do that, which we're not, this is end of the term, this car is going away, he's towing it out of here, literally tomorrow. We're not going to have a chance to finish this, which kind of sucks. But this would be the point, if this is my car, before I'm putting a computer in here, I want to know why this happened. This doesn't just happen, a sensor ground circuit getting cooked like this. The last car I saw with a sensor ground circuit that did this was the caravan that I showed you guys with the melted harness for the injector. And what was happening is the injector was arcing into the sensor ground circuit and that's what cooked the computer ground. It literally took the ground away. The only thing, and this would be really a toss up because I don't know if that board is, is going to let us do a visual inspection. I would like to unplug that connector and let's take the covers off that board and let's see if we can see something burnt. Can we do that? I have a question. Yes. What he was when he took the timing chain, he didn't have spark then either. Oh yes, let's talk about the timing chain thing, right? The customer states that when the timing belt broke, the car was running fine. And he bought the car like that. So is it possible that the belt is still off and that valves are bent? Is it possible that the reason the car didn't start in the first place is because the timing belt wasn't put on correctly and then in the process of testing all this other stuff, the computer was cooked? That's what I think is the scenario, but I don't know. And without getting the computer fixed, we can't really, and we could spend time and do cam crank relationships and verify the belt. But you guys understand that I don't care about that right now. I want, I want the computer to work. To work. I, I take that back. If this is a customer's car, you would not want to sell them a $2,000 computer um, only to tell them later that the timing belt is off and the valves are bent. So if this was, if we were in the field and we were doing this job, would we want to keep going? Yes. Could we do, use our cam crank relationship? Should we do it? Damn it. I'm already on the cam crank. I can ground the circuit and get a cam signal and then we can look at cam crank and see if the timing belt's on right. But I want to look at the computer too. Let's do this. How would you tell with the crank? Because it does the AC sine wave. I'll show you. Let's do, let's do that. I gotta set it back up up there too. All right, we'll we'll do cam and crank. Get me back on my computer ground, uh, Shane. Yeah. And I'll set this up so we can see the smart board, and we'll do the cam crank relationship. All right. So wait, let's let's talk about what we did. No, I don't need that feed right for for this part. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have cam and crank, and our coil control signal is not connected, right? Or, oh, you are on coil. No, it's fine. We can leave it. Um, so you guys know what we did off camera. We re-jumped the sensor ground circuit, um, the one that was reading 4.1 volts on the computer. We grounded that so we could get a, uh, a cam signal. So that's all we need. Um, go ahead and crank it and hopefully we can find a known good waveform here to go by.
Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. That works. Let's go back a page here. Um, a little filter would be nice. How do you like that filtering? It's pretty awesome. cool, huh? Yes. All right, so what we want is a couple of rotations of that to really analyze this. And, and what we want to do is we want to take these two guys, put them together, and really find out where, where they correspond with each other. But the thing is with this is I need a known good waveform. So let me save this first. And then we're going to check your IATN or whatever? Yes, I'm going to talk about that. All right, so um, let's talk about IATN for a second. IATN is a place where I go to get waveforms. Uh, that's International Automotive Technician Network. And I did look on IATN. And let's see, do I have that tab open? I, I found one. Uh, and I actually contacted the guy to make sure that he was okay with me using uh, his waveform, but it ended up being it ended up being on a uh, 2006 volt uh, TDI. It was a turbo diesel, so I couldn't I couldn't use that one. So then um, another one that's available for you Pico users, but you have to have a scope connected to use this, and you have to sign up for an account, which is free when you have a Pico. But if you go to the Waveform Library browser, it uh, connects up your scope and verifies that. And I think I should still be signed in here. Yeah. And so I did a search already. Um, one of 24. I don't know why my info isn't still here. Uh, this diesel info, or Volkswagen, I can't get over there. A little offset. Here's the one I want to use, I think. A, there's a 99. This one would probably be closer to us. This is a 2009 uh, 2 liter. Ours is a 2006. So the nice thing about this, guys, is when I open this waveform, and this is what's unique about the Pico website, um, it actually opens the waveform in my scope. So if I go back to my scope now, I should have that waveform loaded. Do I? Hang on. Thank you. Now you see why I saved that picture. So let me close this box out. This is that waveform. So not only, it's not, the nice thing about it as opposed to other sites is this is not a JPEG image. This is something that I can m manipulate and move with my scope. And I can zoom in and out. And, and actually what would be helpful for us right now is to take a reference waveform. Do you remember how to do that? We go tools, reference, these are the ones we made uh, yesterday on that, or the day before on a car we did together. We'll take these two channels, double click B, double click C, and then I just made reference waveforms for that. And then I'm saving that, and now what we can do is we can open our folder. This is us right here, the one we just saved. I might need that file back again. I can save that file if I want to. This is ours. It already looks off. And then we take our views and we turn, sorry, tools, reference. Um, oh, it didn't let me keep it. Why didn't it? Because I didn't save the file, maybe. Do you have to duplicate it? No, they should be there already. They're not. I need to redo. Why don't you reference those ones and then open the other one and throw those I, ones on I there? I might be able to do that. Let's try that. Tools, reference, so we'll go A, no, we want, yeah, A and B. A and B, and hit OK. OK, that should have worked. I don't know why it didn't. File, waveform library. I wish it would keep that there. I need, I need that file back. Save this file. All right, so this is that, that one again. Let, let's see if it allows me to pull these in. Yeah, here, here's ours. And so what we want to look at, guys, is uh, our frequencies are going to be off and, and, and things like that. But what we can now do, the reference waveform is dim. So this is mine. The red trace is my. The green and red? I don't want to zoom that far. Hang on.
Um, the green and the red were his. Yeah. Okay. The blue and the red are mine. Um, I really should have had more of this in here. Did we? Thought that I did. I thought so as well. Yeah. Well, this should be enough because from here, from from here to here, is 360 to here is 720. So um, if we look at uh, 720 of his would be, and this is going to be a little bit harder. Can you draw on it with your smart board? Yes, I can. I mean, it might not be the most. Yeah, we could probably do that. Um, let's go with a blue pen. So looking at this sink and then it looks like the, see the um, pattern here of the, uh, this one right here looks like it's falling right in line with the sink. Can you see that? Pretty close anyway. Yeah. So there would be in 720 looking from here to here. In 720 I have a, a skinny one and two fat ones and a skinny one. Do I have that pattern? There's um, 720 the skinny, two fats and a skinny. Okay, and it looks like the second fat one, the leading edge of the second fat one, which would be leading, trailing, leading, this one lines up right with, you guys see that? Right yeah. with the sink. You see how we're off? Yes. So it looks to me like the timing belt is off on this, okay? Um, we wouldn't want to sell the customer a computer with the timing belt being off. The other thing would be compression would need to be verified on this motor. So here's what I think happened. I think the timing belt was put on incorrectly and I think the computer doesn't know what to do with these signals and so it wouldn't start. And I think in the process of him checking everything, he did something and he cooked his computer ground circuit. I don't know what he did, but he did something. And, and so I think that's the progression. That's how we can explain that the car ran before the timing belt broke, and now we have a faulty computer. This would be operator error, mechanic error. But it's his car, so, you know, he bought it that way, and he, he'll have to suffer the consequences of random wire cutting and poking and letting things touch each other. That's what we'll attribute it to. Um, let's, I'm, I'm gonna do this before we end this part. I, I wanna take a little bit more zoomed in level of his capture here. Uh, let me clear my ink. Do you need me to sign that, Jess? Do you think an ignition coil or an ignition would try that? An ignition coil? Ignition. What do you mean? He has an oh, with the ignition switch? Yeah. What he did in there? No, he has another one in there. He swapped over. He swapped ignition switches? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I have no idea. I don't know the cause. <laughs> uh, but let me, let me look at this line up here. It almost looks, so again, the, you guys see where that lines up? Almost, it's definitely within that notch, the leading edge of that second fatter pulse. Okay, 720, look right here, leading edge. There's, there's my 720, leading edge. Look how far off we are. It's not even close. Now this is a 2009 and ours is a 2006. We do see the same patterns. I know my amplitude is off. Not an issue, right? Uh, we're cranking. Yeah, we're cranking and I'm only grabbing one wire. If remember some of these VRSs have floating grounds and to see full amplitude, you wanna grab both wires. Uh, not the case for us. We're doing a relationship issue and it looks like our relationship is off. We could look at another one. It looks like the, see the um, skinny fat fat skinny see the trailing edge of the skinny on ours yeah is lined up with that let's see the 720 here's his 720 and we'll go skinny fat fat skinny the trailing edge of the skinny on that one is almost dead on so what where we're talking about so look at look I want you guys to look right here Look right there, okay? Pretty much aligned, and now look where this one's at. Same amount of teeth off. Look where we're at. 
should be over here, right? We're, we're like in here, we should be over here. Th this belt is, is not on right. Timing belt needs to be removed and replaced correctly. Compression needs to be verified. This is supposed to be an interference engine. It doesn't sound good to me. I don't think it's fruitful for us to check compression because if compression's low, can't we also attribute compression being low with the belt being off? We could. Um, I'm not going that direction. For us, I want to focus the rest of our time on that computer and I want to shut this down. I want to take that cover off and see if we can find something burnt in there. Okay. Okay? Yes. All right. So um, we took this computer apart and it was a real pain in the butt to do it. This was all uh, siliconed all the way around. If this wasn't one that we were confident the computer was faulty, I wouldn't have recommended doing this. It, we had to get pretty aggressive with it to get it apart. Um, but what we ended up doing is mapping out which pin on here was the computer ground pin. And then we were able to identify the pin on this side of the board. And let me show it to you on my phone first. I don't know if we could see it live or not. Oh, okay, well, we can try. I don't think that that's gonna work, but we could try. I would need, let me show it on my phone. All right, so what you're looking at right here is the pin that comes in. That's my computer ground pin. And what you can see is the burnt copper wire that's on the board that this was created. This was a caused problem. Somebody jumped something into a circuit that they shouldn't have. And that's what cooked this computer ground. Um, if we reattach this, we, we can. You can actually take a piece of solder. We could actually take from here to here with a piece of wire and attach the two and we could fix this board. But the problem is this car is still not going to start. Why is that? Because something shorted it, something. I don't think so much for that. I think that'll fix this oh, part. Timing. Timing Sorry. belt. Yeah, we talked about I, it. I would like to at least maybe attempt to do that. I mean, why not? It's already cooked. Right. It's faulty. I don't, I'm, listen, you guys are going to make fun of my repair here, but the thing is I don't do this stuff. Okay. I don't do computer repairs. Um, I'll try. And what I'm thinking is taking a piece of wire from here, this location here and jumping it to here. Although I, you know, that looks easy on here, right? Nice and big. It's not. Let me show it to you on the board. I might Here's change my. Here's a finger. My, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let me hold on. Hold on. Here's the pin. Let me zoom in on that a little bit more, and just to get a perspective of point to the pin with that. With the pick. With the pick, and then I'll give Here's you. The pin. And then I'll give you a finger perspective as far as the size. I'm not even going to try. Okay. Someone with better eyesight and more patience than, than me. You could fix that. You guys understand that. If this was your board and you made that mistake, you could fix that. This is fixable. Um, all of the silicon, though, that's here, you know, this was, this was, um, let me show you the other side. This area here and, and here was siliconed to the, is it silicone or silicon? Whatever you want it to it's, be. There's a difference. No, and I got them British all mixed up in my head, yes. Silicon. Um, <clears throat> silicone, silicon, whatever. Um, here and here. And then it was also done all the way around the board. And then on the back side, it was done to this location. So we have some sealer everywhere. Um, you would have to be I would, I would think clean all the old stuff off. You're not gonna do that on the board. I don't know. I'm not a computer repair guy, but I know this. There is no way. Okay, where's that pin? Point this out to me, Shane. Yes, one more probably. time. <laughs> and then give me- Ooh, It's the second one, right there. It's that one there. The second one. Look at the size. Well, my thumb's big anyway, but- Yeah. Look at the size of that pin, and then point to the location I wanted to fix it to. It went up. For, right yeah, there, that's where there. the break is, where you're- Yep, and then all the way up at the end where the, right there. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. I'm not doing it. I don't have the equipment small enough to fix that. Sure, let's just drop it. It's done, it's, it it's shot, it's, yeah, it's no, shot. Don't worry about it. And here's the other thing though. It's a good thing that we did the timing belt check because we put it this in. Even, even if you put this together, this car is not going to run. And I think that would explain why we were able to get our cam sensor signal back, but then our coil firings were still the same because we have a garbage signal. Garbage in, garbage out. 
Camera cranks are not aligned, the computer doesn't know what to do with these coils. Just curious. Yeah. Remember how we jumped the ground? Yeah. Say they got everything back together, cam, coil, whatever, everything back together, and they fixed all their doings. If they jump the ground, do you think that would be as, you know, like a... I've actually done that before, Shane, and it does work. The only exception to that rule is going to be this. If you have a circuit, remember that if we jump it, that everything external, so from my finger out, would work properly. But what so else What else inside of the board is using that circuit internally? Let's say, for example, that um, this chip used the sensor ground circuit. Um, it's no longer grounded. Well, no, let's see. It would still be, that might work because the ground would be good from the break in. So the rest of the board would still be able to have the sensor ground. Because remember, those go out to the battery grounds. And we, you could actually do what we did, which is jump the external sensor grounds because it's broken right there. Yes, it would work. You would have more noise on your sensors than than what we would want to have because we're externally grounded now, but it would work. Man, that'd be so cool to finish this out like that. But we need to put the belt on right. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it, was, it would be. Well, we could try. No, it's too late. We only have like a minute left. I'm not saying today, I and mean, tomorrow is like the last day of the term, but. That's a belt. That's... Yeah, I don't want to touch it. I'm going to give this back to him. That's good enough. Guys, the, the warning here would be don't jump things that, that you don't know what you're doing. I don't know what cooked that circuit. The ignition switch was all boogered up. This car is, is butchered. Um, I would hate to do all of that and then the car still not start from some other problem and then we just keep going. Yeah, I, I, like I'm, weak, weak yeah. well the spark was weak I think because of our coil control, right. the dwell time would be off. Remember those multiple sparks too? I don't even know if that's normal. I'm done, we're done. Bad ground circuit. Here's the final for this. When you have high voltage on a sensor ground and, you, and it's all the way measured at the computer, so we read 4.1 volts in this location. Yep. Before you call a computer, you check your main grounds, which we did. We called the computer. I was not able to show you guys the car running, but I did show you the burnt computer ground. It's good enough as far as troubleshooting goes. Uh, we're done with this car. Yeah, so we really don't know. I think it was probably the guy that was in there doing tests. I, I don't have an answer for why the sensor ground circuit got cooked like that. Um, too much current flow for sure. And how much current flow is on a sensor circuit? Not enough to burn the ground. Even if you took the 5 volt reference circuit and shorted it to the sensor ground, it wouldn't do that. So... What caused it, this has to be, in my opinion, has to be um, human error in testing. Um, all right, so this goes externally. From this pin right here, that comes out to the computer pin and then would go to all of my sensors. I didn't look on the diagram to see if there were other sensor grounds. Sometimes a computer circuit will have multiple sensor ground inputs. Sometimes they'll only have one main one. Uh, my, my guess is this may have another. Yeah, was two. There was two sensor ground circuits. So we had, you know, however many sensors are on the engine management system, half of them going to one sensor ground and the other half going to the <coughs> other. Um, when we jumped this circuit to ground externally, we were able to provide the cam sensor with a ground and then we're able to get the cam sensor signal. This is the stuff you guys missed. Uh, early on, I don't know if you guys saw that, we had a crank signal but no cam. And we had no cam signal, we had a flat line 5 volts, flat line 5 volts says no operation of the sensor, and then we unplugged the component found out that it was a 5 volt pull down design hall effect. By the way, that's on your test this morning. What are the two design Hall Effect pull circuits? Up pull, up pull up and pull down. So uh, let's just talk about that for a second, the pull up, pull down circuitry. Fixed 5 volt signal on that sensor, and I unplugged it, and it read, it read 5, telling me it was a pull down design. <clears throat> Crank the engine over, no signal, flat line 5. Just doing the signal circuit. This, this is my cam sensor here. We measured at the sensor and we read 5 volts, okay? Fixed 5 volt signal. 
The sensor itself, all Hall effects would have a power, a ground, and then a signal. That's what the test do. Power, ground, and signal. Some Hall effects are powered by 12 volts. Other Hall effects are powered by 9 volts. Uh, our Dodge truck shorted vehicle speed sensor circuit. It was a 9 volt reference that, that fed the um, supply to that Hall effect. That vehicle speed sensor was a Hall effect. Some of them use a 5 volt reference as the power supply for the Hall effect. Okay. In our, the case of our Volkswagen, this positive is the 5 volt ref circuit. And my ground didn't go to the block. Where does the ground go? PCM. The ground goes to the engine computer. Okay? So really all of these, the signal, the 5 volt ref, this is my 5 volt ref, this is my signal, and this is my, what's another name for a sensor ground? Signal low. Reference signal, low. Signal return. Return. Or, or reference low, or, right? Okay. Right. Earth retraction. <laughs> so we did our check in this location, and we read 5 volts all the time. Give me some options that would cause this fall. A 5 volt fixed signal. Doesn't move, doesn't change. Open uh, an open signal wire. Well, I gotta say no on that one. Here, here's, here's why an open signal wouldn't do that. If it was a pull up design, what we're saying as far as a pull up design is the sensor is sending a, a zero five volt square wave in a pull up fashion generated by the sensor to the PCM or ECM. So we're talking about if up? this wire was open, what would we see on a pull-up design? Zero. We would still see potentially a signal because it's being generated by the sensor. Now again, the sensor would have would have a a power. It would have a ground, and it would be generating this signal in a pull-up fashion. If the signal wire was open. We would have zero at the computer all the time, agreed, but on the sensor side, what would you, what would you have? Probably. Potentially a signal. And it wouldn't be... It's not supposed to be a flat five. It wouldn't be a flat five or flat zero. When you crank the engine over, if you did this measurement right here at the sensor, which is what we did, um, we would see... Actually, no, we did measure it at the computer, didn't we? If we measured it at the computer, then Tom, you're correct. An open in the signal wire would be an option on this design. You follow? Yeah. I'm measuring over here. But if you measured at the sensor, you would actually have a signal at the sensor. If you follow my flow charts on pull-up, pull-down circuitry for a Hall effect, I actually talk about this variable with the pull-up design. I have it described as um, trouble code for the computer for a sensor but you notice when you measure it at the sensor the signal's good and then I t I'm telling you to check for an open circuit all right so a, a uh, variable there would be an open signal depending on where you measure give me another one that would give me a fixed five this is what we have fixed five fixed at five volts and I guess we should I guess we should talk about where we're measuring to the rest of the way here so Normally, I would measure at the sensor first. From the sensor side, hold on, let me back up. Do you guys understand from the sensor side or computer side that it changes your variables a little bit? Yeah. I just gave you an example of one. You mm -hmm. measure at the sensor, you're reading a signal. You measure it at the computer, it's zero. Okay? Yeah. Open All right. So for us, let's plug it into what we did. Where did we measure? We measured at the computer. So I did this wrong up here, didn't I? Mm -hmm. We actually measured both. But we did, but initially, yesterday, we measured the signal wire and we were stuck at 5 volts. The next step that I did, hold on. Is it pull I'll up? Do it's it. pull up? It's well, pull that was the next step. Is what? Before we did any more troubleshooting, I wanted to know my circuit design. You unplugged it. So that's exactly right, John. I went to the sensor and I unplugged it while maintaining 5 volts here. What did that tell me? about the circuit design, pull down. Pull down. that it's a pull down design. So the way that this 
signal is created is the computer sends a 5 volt signal and it would be 5 volts across a resistor that's designed to get pulled to ground. The sensor essentially is a switch that's switching to ground and the signal would be high when the switch is open and when the switch closes the signal <coughs> drops low. When the switch opens again the signal goes high. Uh, switch closes, signal goes low. You guys understand what's creating this Hall effect square wave signal? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. So by me unplugging it and the circuit staying at five told me this is a five volt pull down design Hall effect, which was important for the rest of the testing methods. Okay? All right. Could we have an open in the signal wire as Tom suggested earlier? Yes, it wouldn't be zero volts, it would be five. Well, I think that was probably why, John, we measured it next at the sensor and we read five in that location too. So how's my signal wire from computer all the way to the sensor? Good. Good. All right. The next steps that I normally would do is leave it plugged in and check my power and ground. But in this case I unplugged it because of its location. I just wanted to get two quick measurements on my reference and ground circuit. Okay. I'm not suggesting that you unplug a sensor to check the sensor ground circuit. Why did I do that? I just wanted some quick measurements. It, the, uh, the result of that test might have dictated me plugging it back in. Okay? But what, what did we see when we unplugged this connector? What did we see? I saw on the reference three point something. Seven? Sure. Was it 3.7? It was 3 something. I'll call it 3.7. Yeah, I think so. And on the um, signal return, I read 4.1. Yeah. It was jumping around. Why is the sensor not working? Why is the sensor not producing a square wave? Number one, my reference voltage is low. I don't like that. But number two, more importantly here, I don't have a ground. Now, how does that work? I, I told you guys that we should never do ground-to-ground -ground circuit testing with a component unplugged with no load on the circuit. How, how is that working? If, if this has an open, which we know it does, there is an open in the ground. Now, granted, it's, it's inside the computer. But if that open were to be there, how are you having voltage with the sensor unplugged? In my drawing, you wouldn't. You guys see that. And opening that ground, the way my drawing is, this would be zero volts all the time. Why are we reading 4-1? Answer is what? What else ties in to this? Where are my X's? Five cylinder? No. No. no, I'm saying you got five X's. So like That's not my cylinders. Something. What's tied into that sen uh, signal return? Injectors. Other okay. sensors. <coughs> Injectors, no. <coughs> cylinders, no. I just seen five. Other. Okay. Better. What else is plugged into this circuit? Excellent. Other sensors. Are we still loading this ground? Yes. Okay. If it was a break in just this one segment, I would have read zero here. Mm -hmm. Right? If I read zero on that ground, do you think I would have plugged it in and rechecked that ground at that point? Yeah. Yes. But the fact that I read 4-1 said what? This isn't just an open ground on this one circuit. It's an open ground <laughs> on all of these. So my ground is open in here. Ended up being in the computer as I drew all over top of it. My open ground is actually right there. Right there. What caused it we still don't know. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever know what caused it. He jumped something is what caused it. We jumped 12 volts into a sensor ground circuit. He, he probably uh, mistakenly felt like he needed power somewhere where he shouldn't have put it. And that's what he did. Or, remember yesterday when I used my ammeter and yeah, unintentionally I was trying to do a voltage measure? Oh, yeah. Is it possible that he had his voltmeter connected and he had his uh, you know, positive lead in the, in the amp port? 
So we got a square wave back, but the car still didn't start. We still had a spark issue. And then the other thing too that's a concern, and we never went back and looked at it, is that 3.7 volts on the reference wire, on the reference circuit. 3.7 is low for a reference. I'd be okay with 4.5, 4.6 for a reference. It's probably as low as I've seen and, and called it acceptable because the car was working fine. But 3.7, I promise you, is too low for the reference circuit. So, so there's some other damage, I believe. Now, I never rechecked it once we grounded this circuit. We, we actually externally grounded this lead, and we were able to get our cam signal back. You guys, does that make sense on the Hall effect working after we did that? And some solenoids started clicking. Did they? Mm -hmm. But we had, we had no signal on, on this sensor at all. And we, when we grounded this signal return at the computer, we were able to get our, our signal from the sensor. It started to produce a signal. And that's how we were able to do a cam crank relationship and figure out that the timing belt's also wrong. And so they put the timing belt on incorrectly. And we almost didn't do that and I thought, from a standpoint, if you were in the field, would you sell the customer, let's just say this is a $2,000 computer. I don't know if it is or not. Would you sell the customer a $2,000 computer only to tell them when you're done that their timing belt is off and they potentially have bent valves? Now we never even bothered to check compression pressures. Uh, I'm, we're done with this car, <coughs> unfortunately done with this car. End of term, car's gotta go. Um, if I had more time, I'd probably want to put the belt back on like it's supposed to and then check compression pressures before we would ever put this computer in this car. And then I think from there, I, I, would, I would like to try to um, externally ground this circuit and just see what happens, see how it runs. It might end up working because the rest of this, well, it depends on, on the rest of the circuit, but the rest of this from here up would have a good ground internal would have a good ground. Um, but the no communication was bothersome too. Uh, we may end up you know, walking that path for a few days and doing all this stuff. You may end up finding you need a computer anyway because there's other damage inside before this burned out right here. Some other damage may have occurred. Uh, like my reference circuit being low. Why is that low? Is that low because maybe we're missing that ground? It could be. Um, but I don't know. Too many unknowns from the, at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fixable. If it's my car, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to try. And I just, I don't have time to make it, you know, to change anything or do anything else. And I'm oh, maybe a little bit glad. Part of me is a little bit glad I don't have time. Any questions on the sensor ground circuit? How important it is to check a sensor ground when you have a sensor that's not working properly? If you have a Hall effect that's not producing a signal, you know, you, you, you might get complacent and you just throw a sensor at it. And uh, there's some other things you need to check. Check your sensor power, check your sensor ground. See if it's pull up or pull down to do your checks properly. And one more piece for Hall effects would be rotation. Make sure that whatever is triggering the Hall effect is still there, because uh, that can be an issue too. Yep. So pretty cool pick. That will forever be part of my sensor ground discussion for my classes for the future. So you guys can you can uh, feel confident that yeah, this will be used over and over and over again. That one kind of gives you a perspective of how small that pin is. You see the pick that Shane's holding there next to the next to the pin. Super tight. I mean, we looked at it for a while, didn't we? Before we. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who who eyeballed that? Who gets props for seeing that? Oh, is that, that you, Shane? Me. That was pretty good, man. Because I didn't see it. I, I was looking at. I was looking at. I didn't see it. Oh, this is uh. This was the Camaro. Yeah. This is a a what the module should look like inside. And and um, that's what what that's what the eBay one looked like inside. <laughs> um, 
Why do they silicone it? I, that's a protectant. Yeah. It's uh, it keeps moisture and dirt and contaminants, and I think it holds everything stable too. This is a really uh, rough environment the car is, so it's it's not silicone. I don't know what they're using. Some kind of gel that goes over top, and um, that looks like more silicone. Good looking. I mean, it's kind of cool that someone knew what to do to fix it, but. Yeah, I don't even know what this component was that ended up melting in there. But that's the piece that caught on fire. It was pretty cool. We could hear it and watch it hiss. It was $9? $9 eBay module. I don't think we buy $9 modules anymore, huh, Josh? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe 10 Because I really think that this module did cook that coil. I don't think it was the other way around. Our coil was it had a flat-out shorted primary. If that primary was shorted... When we bolted this module on, would we have had spark in any way, shape, or form ever? No. no, no. Sir. And we had spark a couple times, and then we lost spark. So what happened? This co this module cooked our coil. I I'm confident that that's the way that that went. And then after it cooked the coil, it still had enough left that when we turned after we cleaned the ground, uh, it still had enough left when we turned the key on that it it just melted the thing. It was pretty cool. I wish I would have had the camera rolling for that part. Because <laughs> we were like, what, what is going on? And, you know, I felt kind of foolish there for a second. Like, I, I guided you guys in the wrong direction. But um, oh, it was, was a blast. We pissed off. We did not. <laughs> that car is crazy. Is it still, is it still running? Yeah. Is, is that your posy strips coming up the hill? Uh, no. I know. I, we, we, on uh, <laughs> mic here, thanks for a good term. Guys, seriously, uh, you guys will uh, forever live in the videos on uh, um, our field trip day. I have a couple of those where I have everybody in there, so that's super cool. You guys, I'm in the middle of editing those now, and uh, yeah, I'm going to miss this class. This is a really good class. You're probably, probably thinking I say that to all my classes. I definitely don't. <laughs> you know, last last day type stuff on some of my classes in the past have been you know here's your test and you know uh, not a whole lot else said and most of the time it's not like that but when you have a group this size and I know you guys had some reservations coming in here with a group of 23 on paper um, so we finished with 22 uh, just because um, one of the guys had some issues he took a leave so but he'll be back but having a class this size, and I know you guys had reservations about it, and I'm the one that caused it, uh, well, just you. given given my time schedule and everything now. But I, I like a big class, and you guys kind of enjoyed it. Um, did exactly what I had hoped for for a class this size, and I really appreciate it. Definitely uh, some real good groups that we had working together, and I need that with with. You know, days like uh, what's what's your car, Darius? A Corrado. A Corrado <laughs> that randomly stalls a Volkswagen that has a burnt sensor ground circuit. A uh, what was that other one? An R32 with who knows what that thing was doing to you know the Ford truck with the with the uh, distributor issues and map sensor issues. And I mean, we had some stuff. I mean, at times the workload's pretty tough for me. You know, to be able to, oh, and the Camaro, of course, no stock, right? No fuel, no yeah, injector, no computer, right. No the fuel. injectors are no stuck juice. closed. The you know, no yeah, that thing was no juice. that thing was yeah, crazy. Yeah, but you guys can see on. now, like in hindsight, you see in hindsight how some of these cars, I have to have tunnel vision to be able to guide you on what to do next. And the unfortunate part about tunnel vision would be that I can't, nobody else exists at the moment, <laughs> you know, I have to like fully concentrate on that car to have an idea and direction, and you guys handled that well, and uh, it would really be beneficial to me for you guys to let other people know and other students know from the next classes coming in on what it takes, like you need to focus, you need to help Dan her out, you know, and that's what I asked of you guys in day one. Do you, do you see what I was talking about now? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's difficult, and I don't know how to convey that well to my new students coming in how much I need you guys to focus and pay attention so you can help me in those moments where we have four live cars that are all problem cars, and 
And I know, Darius, you were feeling like I was ignoring you yesterday, I and, and I was. <laughs> so, you're not good. But I was, I because I had to, For my that. tunnel vision was on this Volkswagen, this picture, one last time, right? This car definitely, definitely gave me tunnel vision, and you can see, you can see why, right? Um, so... That's off my chest, and then Winters texted me last night, hey, my chuck's missing, can you help me? I'm like, nope, got to help Darius today. So my tunnel vision will be on your car today as soon as we're done. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll get an idea on that. His will not be on film, I apologize for that. So maybe we'll turn the camera on. You don't want that on film? Hold that $500 a month. Yeah, uh, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. What's that? I see one today. I don't know. The problem with Darius's car is recreating the fault involves like driving it at high RPM and speed momentarily. Nobody's in the shop. This is where we need a dyno. Nobody's in the shop. Yeah, no, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna give you permission uh, on recording to go fly through the shop. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're still gonna get it. It's just. I'm just saying, I no, just need 30 feet. No, no, Official. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> we're picking up what you're throwing down. <laughs> I just need 30 feet. Go um, All right, I'll, I'll let you guys take a quick break, and then I'll give you this test when you come back. Yeah.